welcome on a new Coach TV Academy Lab Guide. I'm Quentin Guinness, driver for Simmercy, and today we are here for the first week of the Falcon Sports Car Series. We are at Saint Vaud GP with the Porsche 718 GT4. As usual, first we're gonna go with your lap, and then I'm gonna go about the details about the track. So, yep, let's get started. Alright guys, so here we go for the lap around Zenvot with the, the Poch, so here is the, the start finish line and then quickly after that you have the, the T1 coming pretty quickly. So what I'm doing for this one is that I'm breaking a bit before the 100 actually, maybe it's 110 or 105, but yeah I'm breaking earlier because then if I break at the 100 I just have a shout the, the entry, then I can have a decent exit but at the end I will lose too much time on the entry, so yep, as you will see I will just break a bit earlier so then i'm breaking right now so yeah it must be f 105 or something like that so yeah not far away from the um, the hundred then as you can see big breaking zone just trying to break as much as hard as i can when the car is straight but then when i'm starting to put the car into the corner i need to to release the brake so as you can see on the brake then i will need to release the brake i will drop to second for this one i will try to go a bit faster as you can see, releasing the brakes, I will drop to second into the corner. And when I'm when I'm really getting close of the apex, at that point I'm really trying to really bring the car on the inside and then I just try to put the, the, the power early on. So as you can see when I'm making the apex, I'm already on power. For me the apex is um closer to the end because I'm not really getting close of the curb on the on the end. At the beginning, even if I'm close, but the the closest point I am from the curb is when I'm really getting on the exit. So I'm almost having a late apex for this one, a bit wider on the entry, but then I can really get the the tight exit, which is really helpful because, as you can see, the steering is already open when I'm not even close from the the pit the, the exit of the corner. So yeah, then it really helps me to to go f to go full power. And then I can put third and just go for the, the curb on the exit. Then we will approach the technical part of the other track, I think. One of the most difficult, in my opinion. It's really difficult to um, expect what to do, really, in this part of the track. It's also really difficult to get it consistent. But yeah, what I'm doing for this one is that I, I bring the car to the left on the curb. So I'm just basically running the curb. And then when I, I'm seeing that the curb is, um, is ending, I just start to break so i'm breaking on the curb as you can see breaking on the curb not breaking that much like breaking less than 60 percent just about to slow down a little bit the car and just to, to find the, the rotation uh, to make it into the corner so as you can see just breaking on the curb 60 percent 
Then I'm just releasing, jumping to third. Still on the break, just trying to make sure I can find the rotation. It's really easy to get the rotation actually into this one, so it's really important to maximize the, the breaks. And then as, can, as you can see, when I'm really into the corner, then starting to go on throttle, getting the curb as well on the on the apex. I'm just getting a little bit of it, but uh, yeah, you don't really feel the curb, so it's it doesn't even feel like you are really f riding the curb. And then, as you can see, into the corner, going on the throttle, and then need to carry a bit of momentum just uh, uh, between the the entry of the big carousel and the, the corner before. And also because the fact that I'm going on power actually helps me to bring back the car to the right because with the momentum you have, it's it's pretty tricky to, uh, from the from the, the corner before, the right-hander, it's pretty tricky to bring the car straight away to the, to the right because with the momentum. And the fact that you almost have to go back a bit uphill, I would say, maybe maybe not, but it's just maybe my own pers perspective, I would say. But yeah, it feels like you you have to do some effort to to go back to the right. So yeah, that's why that's why the, the throttle is really important in that case. So yeah, as you can see on throttle, and then just before I'm actually going into the carousel, actually it almost matched the um, the the ads. Uh, on the on the right side, like when you see that it disappears from the screen, then I just start to release the the throttle and just go on the brake. So as you can see, I'm just went past the the, the ads on the right side. Then I start to brake. No need to brake that much. I mean, I I need to brake because I need to make sure I'm slowing down the car enough. But then it's not really about finding the rotation. I mean, the, the rotation comes pretty naturally, I would say, because as you can see, it's completely on camber, so it's really easy to get the, um, the rotation and the grip, but the thing is to make sure you don't overshot this one. And also sometimes the, the, um, the thing into this corner is to make sure at least with the GT3, uh, the GT4, is to not go too too high on the on the banking, because if you go, if you basically go too high on the curb, on the, the the banking, it just feels like you are just losing the front and it starts to understeer. Um, and then if you are too wide, it's it's not really helpful either for the um, for the exit because then you will be just too wide on the banking and you will go almost off the track uh, on the exit. So yeah, I just prefer to keep a bit of a margin. So as you will see, still on the brake, and then when I'm just in the middle of the banking, I will just go fully on power. As you can see, I'm just keeping a bit of a margin. I'm I'm close of the white line, but I'm not really playing with the the, the line and the um, the green painted stuff. Like I'm just keeping a bit of a margin, which is for me good enough. No need to go higher. Like I said, then you will lose the front, in my opinion. So yeah, just need to keep a bit of a margin. But like that, I, it's all okay. And then as you can see, it it's, it grips a lot uh, in this uh, part of the banking, so you can go just. Fully on power. That's why it's important to not go too high, basically, because as you can see, I'm just going early, full power. So then, if I'm too high and I, I go full power, I think I will lose a bit of uh, of the on camber effect of the of the corner, and then I will just understeer, and then I'm gonna have to to lift on the exit. Then, as you can see, just getting the curbing on the exit, and that's why that that's why because it's important to not go too wide on the exit because. This when you you clip the, this this run of it doesn't feel really good. Like it almost feels like you are driving on the grass or the gravel, even if it looks like tarmac. But yeah, just feels really weird when you go you go on this um, part of the track. So yeah, just better to to keep it on the on the the actual curb. Then we move on the S's, so fully flat on the right. Then to the left, fifth gear curb. Then. For this little right-hander, I just prefer to keep the car on the left side, or at least just riding the right wheels on the on the white line, because it feels like when you are cutting a bit, like the car is almost jumping, and you lose a bit of um, of stability. I would say. I mean, you lose a bit. Of, uh, you lose a bit the line. Um, I I guess. So I just prefer to stay on the left side of the of the white line, or at least just riding with the right wheels on the on the white line but yeah when when i'm crossing the white line when i'm coming from the um, I, i'm cutting a bit and then i just go 
I just crossed the white line. Doesn't feel that good because the car is almost feels like it's jumping and then it puts you into in a in a wet posi wet position to to prepare the the long right, which is quite technical because it's really easy to have a bit of oversteer with the um, with the rear. So then if you have this oversteer into this one, you can yeah you you are in the big struggle because th that's that corner is really quick. So yeah. So then I put the car on the left. And then when I'm getting past the, the end of the curbing on the right side, I just go on the brake. I think I dropped to third for this one. Or maybe I stay with fourth. No, no, I stay with fourth. I think wha once I tried with third, but I'm not even sure. But yeah, fourth. Fourth is the way. So as you can see, getting past the curb on the left side, then dropping only a single gear. And then as you can see, I'm really holding the brakes. really important to make sure you are getting close of the curbing when you are you, you are seeing that you are getting really close of the curbing then you can go on power but if I, I could go on power right now but if i do it then i will just get some understeer and i will just miss the apex and i will lose a lot of momentum on the exit so it's really important to hold a bit of brakes so as you can see i'm not holding that much like i'm keeping 15 20 maximum percent on the brake but then this really helps me to actually stick on the inside and then when I'm getting close of the curbing I can really go on power get the momentum on the exit and then you will see that when you go on power and you are getting close of the curbing the car should stay on the on the line and not get on the steer then get all the curbing on the exit should be fine if you you've done what I I told you before getting keeping the car on the on the very inside then you should not get any under steer so you should not be scared on the on the exit to get track limit or go off the track. Then I keep I keep the car on the left, ride the curb, and then when I'm off the curb going on the brake, just trying to slow down a little bit the car, but at the same time I need to carry quite a lot of momentum. So this one, as you can see, just going on power when I'm on the curb. And then I need to carry the momentum, bring the car to the left, but at the same time being careful being careful that I'm not going too too wide on the left because the, the curb remains pretty um slippery I would say. And same, if you clip the grass with the one of the left wheels, you are almost dead all the time. So yeah, I always prefer to keep at least the right wheels on the racetrack because for me the, the curbing is really really slippery. Um, most of the time when I've done the the laps uh, to make the setup, it always felt a bit sketchy, especially because you have to brake on the curbing. So for me, with the four wheels, even if I think it can be tricky to put the four wheels, by the way, but you should be able to do it for sure. Yeah. For sure, it, you can you can make it. So yeah, if you really play with the limit and you really use all the curb, for me, ah, it's it's tricky because yeah, like like I said, it's it feels quite slippery. I would say on the curb. So yeah, F safe option for me. I prefer to keep the right wheels on the track, so at least it keeps to safe. Um, it it keeps me sort of safe when I'm braking, because then it's it's really the it's really at, th at this moment when I'm on the brakes that the car really can get oversteer because of the slippery curb. So then, as you can see, riding a bit of curbing, and then when I'm really getting, pff, it's tough to say, but yeah, when I'm getting close of the of the 50 on the left, when you can see that the um, the side of the of the windshield is uh, getting close of the 50, it's it's tough to give a point because. I'm doing this one a bit by instinct, so it's really it's really tough to say. But yeah, when you are getting close of the 50 on the left side and on the right side on my right screen, there is like uh, two containers, uh, red containers. I hope it's containers, but it should be. You have two red stuff on the on the right side on the right side of the um, the guide rails. That's pretty much a two, uh, the two things you can look at. So when those two or three things are getting close of the of the very left and very right of the of the windscreen, then at this point you can start to break. I think you have to break a bit before that, but um, but yeah, because then I don't think I have any other other points to be honest. Um, yeah, my my best explanation to make this one is to maybe look at the the left one. Maybe that's the the most natural one because the right one is. Mm, too far away I would say from your vision because it's almost looking straight if you look at the 50 but 
if you are if you are looking on the right side, you are just not really looking at the track, even if the next corner is a right hander, because the the two things I could look at are too far away from the corner. So yeah, I would say if you are in this position, look at the 50, and when you are getting close of it, just go on the brake. Better to brake a bit earlier because then if you brake too late, you will have to brake stronger which means more ABS which means less rotation which means less speed carried into the corner so yeah just break a bit earlier for this one a bit before the 50 and then as you can see I'm not breaking that much actually breaking my peak is 75 at the beginning or something but then as you can see I'm quickly I quickly decreased at the break because I need to find the rotation then on the apex going back on power trying to open the steering as much as I can on the exit to really optimize the, the the traction. By the way, second gear corner for this one, and then on the exit, open the steering up to third. And then when you are leaving this one, you are going to have a left hander just after that, quite a long left hander. So yeah, I bring the car to the middle of the track. I'm not, I don't bring the car to the very right side. I think some people are doing that with the with other cars, but for me, I just prefer to keep the car in the middle. For me, it, it's, it doesn't feel natural to do that, to be fair. So yeah, just prefer to keep the car in the middle of the track. Then I think you can look at the, um, at the exit road, actually. So when you get past the, the exit road, just a tiny bit before, pretty much like the, the one we saw before with the, the 50, just keep a bit of a margin. So when you are seeing that you are, um, on the center screen when you are getting close of the the exit road then just go on the brake make sure the car is straight so then you at least sort of straight so then you can really optimize the the the, the braking on the entry and then when you are getting into the corner drop to second release the brake find the rotation and then when you are, you are even before the 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 apex because actually i I'm, I'm taking a sort of late apex for for this one on power trying to find the rotation and then when I'm really getting close of the curbing just open the steering up to third just I think I'm sort of um, I'm sort of short shifting for this one so in my opinion it's better because then you can really have a better traction I mean if sometime I, I told you to uh, I told you in the past that you should with the Porsche go as far as you could uh, for the revs but yeah, sometimes it's also better to to short shift, for example, into this one, because at the end you will you you will maybe lose a bit of time um, with the power. But at the end, uh, if you keep putting second for too much time, then you will maybe get get it sideways and you will lose time. So yeah, at the end, it's better to short shift, but then save the tires by not having um, sideways moment. Then, as you can see getting the curbing on the exit and then we approach the last sector of the of the track so i bring the car to the left and then what you need to look at is the is the curb so i'm basically looking at the curb i think you can break at the hundred actually um at the hundred meter but uh, for me i'm just looking at the curb and i, I break a bit before but it seems to match the the hundred curb so when you get past the the hundred the, the hundred the board sorry you can jump on the brake Put the car straight, big braking zone, and then when the cu the curb is ending on the on the left, then you can bring the car to the corner, just release the brakes, drop to second, get a lot of curbing on the on the entry because you can actually get a lot of curbing, but I guess not too much because then you can get the um, an off track or a slowdown, most likely at the beginning a slow uh, an off track, but then if you really cut it too much, you will get the slowdown. And then, very important is to keep a bit of a margin when you are off the of the curbing and not going straight away for the corner because, as you can see, it, it's it's not really going straight. You have to go back a little bit to the right, so then you can really get into the second sort of uh, carousel, even if it's not a carousel. But uh, I don't really know how it's called to be fair. So, yeah, sort of big chicane or, or different chicane uh, or whatever it's called. But yeah. Once again, keep a bit of a margin on the exit of this curb. Just make sure you are not going flat out on the exit. Uh, that's the 
I guess the, easy, the easiest mistake you can make is to think that you can go flat out on the exit of the curb and then that's what leads you to go in the gravel trap. So yeah, keep a bit of, uh, keep a bit of uh, power off, I uh, would say, maybe go 50, as you can see, I'm, I'm going around 55, 60, I guess. Yeah, 60. So yeah, that, that's the thing, keep, it, keep a bit of a margin because then at the same time, if you push too much on the exit of the curbing, then you compromise a lot the, this long left, which actually can be uh, quite painful for the lap time if you um, really compromise this one. So yeah, as you can see then, when I'm into the, the corner, putting a little bit of braking, it's just about slowing down the curb. You don't really need to find the, the rotation because as you can see, it's pretty much like the, the big uh, banking corner. You really find the grip because it's really on camera. So it's not really an issue, but yeah, it's mainly to find the the right speed. So then you can really uh, get the, the good exit for this one. So as you can see, a bit of braking still. And then when I'm getting close of the exit, I'm just going back on power, just trying to make sure this time I find the rotation on the exit and I get the right momentum. So as you can see, second gear, and then on the exit, just opening the steering, full power, up to third, getting the curb, and then I need to bring the car to the left, getting past the 50, and then when you get past the 50, uh, as you can see, there is a sort of um, there is sort of deep uh, into between the 50 and the and the curb. So what I'm doing is that I'm going into this deep, and then when I'm into the the deepest point of the deep and I, I don't know if it's right what I'm saying but yeah when you are into the um, this part of the of the corner just before actually getting into the corner I'm just braking and then I really send the car into the corner so as you can see getting past the 50 into the sort of deep and then I'm going on the brake dropping to third on the brake still holding the brakes quite a bit but not that much as you can see I'm putting most of the brake on the entry, but then when the car is really getting into the corner, when the car starts to go downhill, and when I'm into the camber of the corner, then I just use a tiny bit of brake, just to slow down a little bit the car, but mainly to find the rotation. And then as you can see, keeping third, and then when I'm just before I'm going on the curb, then I'm going on power, trying to find the momentum, trying to find the rotation, trying to put the car in the best position possible to carry the best momentum possible and then just making sure that I'm not going too wide on the exit because the gravel can be very painful for the lap time. I guess this time it's fine if you just clip a little bit of uh, gravel with the wheels but yeah, really have to make sure you're not going too wide on the exit and then it's just about putting through the gears, just try to stay as much as I can on the inside of the of the last banking and then yeah we are done for the lap around Zenvot. Okay guys we are done for today. That was the week four of the Falcon Sports Car series. We were at uh, Zenvot GP. I hope you learned from this lap guide, enjoyed it and you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the the channel and join the Coach Dave uh, Discord ser server if you have any questions about the work we are making. And yeah, I see you for the week five. Bye-bye.